more on the release of the trained passengers. Recently, the federal government did say, Lupe, that it's not exploring military action because of the collateral damage it could have on the victims. And perhaps families now have to negotiate the release of their loved ones one after the other. What more are you learning about this latest development? Well, uh, the news today came, uh, it was a good news today, actually, because uh, it was interesting to find out that four children who had been in captivity uh, for 135 days regained freedom. Of course, you could imagine how difficult it was for these children. Uh, most of them were barely up to 10 years, had kids who were barely up to 10 years, and these children were forced to stay in the bush uh, they, they didn't have opportunity to change their clothes. Uh, and we even wonder what, they, what it was that they were eating all this while. But from the video, you could see that these children uh, were barely up to 10 years and they were forced to stay for over 135 days in captivity. Uh, among them, among those three, is also a woman who is up to 60 years, who was released on the ground that she had a life-threatening uh, health challenges. So this is the situation. But I must tell you that while these ones are celebrating, the families of 27 others are still calling on the government. They are still begging the government to do all it can to ensure that their family members are free. Uh, there is a sad development to this story. The bandits are now releasing these people in batches. That is a very, very troubling situation. Others have argued that these bandits are using this opportunity to make so much money. We don't, it's not, it's not clear now if ransom was actually paid for these ones, but from uh, the situation with victims that were released earlier, their family members had to negotiate payment run into hundreds of millions. Well, Lupe, not less than 27 others are still uh, with the bandits. What are you hearing from the Kaduna state government, for instance? What has been uh, the level of engagement as we get um, efforts to rescue the re remaining victims? Well, of course, the first thing is to beef up security to ensure that this kind of thing does not repeat itself. So uh, at our last engagement with the Kaduna State Government authorities, they said, look, we would not be coming out to say uh, what it is we are doing, but we just want to let the public know that uh, we are doing all we can to secure the place first. So on the part of the Kaduna State Government, this attack has happened, and the others that happened also took place. So what they are trying to do now is to ensure that we don't have a repeat of such attacks. So they began by beefing up security along the Kaduna Abuja Highway last week, and the commissioner was there to inspect, carry out. Uh, they have been carrying out patrols along the Kaduna Abuja Highway to ensure that uh, commuters are no more kidnapped on that road. So for now, they are concentrating on beefing up security in some of these flashpoints that uh, are likely to be attacked by bandits, and they are also issuing issuing a, a security advisory to communities that are prone to attack. They're saying, look, uh, security must be beefed up in this area or people should vacate the area. So the Kandana State government are also doing a lot, they say, but then they are not coming out to say this is what they are doing because they wouldn't want to jeopardize some of their efforts. That appears a dilemma for victims of this particular abduction. Government is saying no to military action because of the possibility of having the victims killed in the process. It's also saying it, it's not ready to pay ransom. So we perhaps we look forward to see how all of these issues are resolved in the coming days. Lupe Asam, thank you for talking to us tonight.